Hey everybody, Sean from Media Salt here, and it's time once again for another movie review. This time out, I'm going to be taking a look at 1982's The Dark Crystal. Uh, this was a film that was directed by Jim Henson and Frank Oz. Uh, it's based on a story by Jim Henson. The screenplay was written by Dave O'Dell, and it features a lot of conceptual design work by Brian Froud. Um, this is a very simple fantasy story that revolves around this planet, which is just referred to as another world, a thousand years ago. And what has essentially happened is there is this all-powerful crystal, the dark crystal, uh, and it has been shattered. And when it was shattered, it was... Uh, it created these two races, the sort of evil lizard-bird combination Skeksis and the gentle wizard-like mystics. There is another race on this planet of which there seems to be only one remaining member and they're called the Gelflings and that one remaining member his name is Jen and he's been raised by the mystics. For some reason the Skeksis are trying to eliminate all the Gelflings and they thought they had but Jen escaped and was raised by the mystics. The Mystic, who is essentially he refers to as his master, is on his deathbed, and he gives Jen this quest to retrieve the shard of the Dark Crystal, and if he can repair the Dark Crystal, then the world will return to its once glorious state, I guess. This is a very simplistic quest tale, um, which wouldn't seem that far out of place in sort of like a Japanese role-playing game although this you know, predated any of those by several years. Uh, this was released theatrically in December of 1982. I actually went and saw it when it was released theatrically, and I liked it, but I didn't think it was that great. Um, this was the first time that I'd watched it since then, and really what I came away with after watching it this most current time, uh, you know, in 2012, is just the incredible amount of detail and craft that went into making this movie. Um, when it was released, it was actually billed as the first live-action film in which a human being does not appear. And, of course, there are human beings on screen, but they're doing puppetry. They're also in suits, these full body suits, that are essentially giant puppets. Uh, so, Jim Henson, of course, is known for the Muppets and you know, puppetry, he's a puppeteer, and the Jim Henson Studios, Jim Henson, Jim Henson Company, created this wonderfully organic world. It, it only occasionally looks like puppets. It's very easy to lose yourself in the world of which there is no CGI in this movie whatsoever, and that's what I really came away with an appreciation of with this movie is just the incredible amount of um, craft and skill and attention to detail that went into creating the world of the Dark Crystal. Um, I've watched a few things on its production, uh, how it went from conceptual designs by Brian Froud to these fully realized costumes, puppets, um, and it's just amazing. And it's even more amazing to think that this movie was made for $15 million. It only made about $40 million at the box office, so it made money. It was just considered a disappointment because it didn't make a lot of money. Um, but you have to think about the year that it was released, 1982, was also there was a little film called E.T. that came out that year that did a lot of family business and was much more family-oriented. The Dark Crystal is really kind of a, a a dark film. The Skeksis are really kind of brutal. They're definitely, um, I, I don't want to say unappealing, but they're, they're kind of disgusting for characters that would appear in a quote-unquote family movie. Uh, the Gelflings, the Mystics, and there's another race called the, the Pod People, I believe, um, they're all, you know, what you would typically think to see in like a family-friendly movie, but the Skeksis are just kind of way on the other side of the tracks. 
Um, but this is a really decent movie. It's it's not the greatest movie I've ever seen. Um, like I said, the story is pretty simplistic. It's just a very simple quest tale. Um, and, you know, Jen, and I'm not giving away any spoilers, Jen comes across another member of the Gelfling race that he teams up with to help him uh, in his quest for the shard and to repair the dark crystal. Um, <clears throat> and the movie, you know, it, it does a lot of family film type things with the story, but it almost seems like it's too adult for a family film and not quite mature enough for to for it to be a full-fledged adult film. So what you kind of come away with is this movie that seems a little too simplistic for how complex this world that it's based in seems to be and all this attention to detail that went into it. Um, I probably would have had more or come away with a more fulfilled uh, appreciation of the film if it was a little more complex or it showed a little more uh, you know complexity story-wise but for what it is it's really really good. Um, had, had I been younger when I saw it, I think I was 14 when I saw this um, I think I would have appreciated a little more than I did when I originally saw it. Being 14, you know, I was kind of skeptical at that time. But <clears throat> um, now as an adult, I can appreciate it for what it is. And I really think that, uh, you know, if you like fantasy films and you haven't seen this, you should really give it a shot and, you know, allow yourself to suspend your disbelief and get into the puppetry. Um, and again, really, it's more of an achievement in terms of filmmaking with the incredible amount of detail that went into it. So uh, definitely recommend The Dark Crystal. I think you should see it. Um, just don't expect too much from it story-wise. Um, so there you go. That's my review of The Dark Crystal. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, feel free to rate, comment, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Thanks. Take it easy.